oldest of the uh, party leaders here, of course, and you have said that you will stand down. Uh, it, that's ironic, isn't it? Because actually, you're the only party leader who we can really congratulate yeah. after the local elections, because you did so well. Why would you now go? When you get to my age, of course, I suppose, you know, you've got to keep your bowel movements regular and prune your roses. So I, I suppose, you know, when you're having to have your backside wiped by a J-cloth, then it's it's probably time to think about hanging up your political tools. And, you know, I might do a bit of television now and again, but apart from that, you know, uh, I'm going to sit back and do fuck all. If you do regret it, though, because unlike Theresa May, you have a lot of momentum behind you. Well, of course, Susanna, you, you have to get your facts right here. You're not at the BBC now. It's that Corbyn wanker that's got momentum behind him. In fact, he's, he spends so much time of his time sitting on the fence, he's probably got splinters in his bollocks. He's got, you know, he, he, he's got no leadership criteria at all. He has all the gravitas of a second-mate parish councillor whose only decision should be decide what colour to paint the local bus shelter. That's about his lot. Parliamentarians made a pledge. They said... You know, there's going to be a referendum, and we all remember the leaflets that were sent out. Whatever you vote for and you decide, we will implement. We are three years on from Brexit. It has not been implemented. You are running now on a campaign and a manifesto of stop Brexit. Are those people who voted not quite, you know, within their legitimate right to feel like they are failed by democracy? that people like you specifically and your party do not care about those votes which were cast, do not care about the democratic will of the people. Well, well of course, Suzanne, we all recognise that Brexit is total bollocks. It has got particularly toxic. I mean, you must agree yeah, about that. Yeah. All that they wanted was, you know, I mean, there's 48% of people who didn't want this, mm. but mm. that wasn't what was promised. That, that actually we've sort of failed people in a democracy. You might not agree with it. Yeah. They do feel failed and things are turning nasty as a result. Well, well of course, Suzanne, it's the fault of all us freeloaders in Parliament who couldn't be asked to get together after the referendum, you know, and get together cross-party and come up with a solution to the problem and go to Europe, bang the table and tell them exactly what we want. It was politicised by a barrister who knows fuck all about business deals and he went to Europe in a position of weakness, which is a joke. Susanna talks about the toxic nature mm. of politics at the moment, and there's one that's much helpful? more direct. I'm going to cover this up slightly, mm. uh, but you can see that there. You can imagine what the rest of that word says. You don't need me to say it. But that's quite a dramatic, toxic word to be using in this sort of environment, escalating the feeling as well. Well, well I would say it's bollocks to the uh, bedwetting liberals who've got no sense of fucking human bollocks to them. I mean, they need to develop a sense of humour. It's robust language, and I need to get down with the kids. It's just a bit of a light-hearted banter, really. Change UK weren't standing in the local elections because the Brexit Party weren't standing in the elections. Uh, that you might lose a significant chunk of the protest vote. People are fed up with Tories. People are fed up with Labour. Then perhaps they're not clear about what those two parties are doing when it comes to implement Brexit. And the European elections... Mm might actually be a bit of a wake-up for you. But, but basically, I think we'll do quite well, Susanna, because we're an alliance of a bunch of bedwetting liberals, whether they were Labour bedwetting liberals or Conservative bedwetting liberals or, or, or a bunch of uh, uh, Liberal bedwetting liberals. We'll form an alliance, and what's the choice? It's either that or you've got Nigel Farage and his Brexit party. So at the end of the day, I couldn't give a flying fox. As long as I've got enough money to uh, hire a small village hall for our annual party conference instead of a great big place, you know. It's, it's, it's better than firing a phone box, because red phone boxes are very hard to come by these days. Uh, they're difficult to find. But we have to leave you, um, because it's your birthday and you need to get on with the uh, celebration. Right. <laughs> um, when you said to your wife we're going to a, an anti-Brexit uh, rally tonight, or party tonight, did you say it was a... Um did you say it was a, uh, a stop Brexit rally, or did you say, oh, darling, we're going to a uh, one of these rallies? Are you a dad dancer? We you know happy you're to get a on the good dancer. Dance well, yes. Yes, I'd like to put a little dress on and have a little bit of a dance. You know, the, the odd hip is beginning to me a bit. Give me a bit of chip these days, but uh, that's nothing a long queue in the NHS couldn't put right. Ballroom, or is it? Would you freestyle to a little bit more contemporary? 
Uh, well, I do like to do a little bit of ballroom dancing, but I, I, I prefer break dancing. That's how I get down with the kids and do a little bit of break dancing. That's what I like to do. Um, but as, as Kate Thunder in the corner there now, she's done.